Hi, everyone. This is Martin Patella from Life Enthusiast. And with me today, I have Romania Dean Thomas, the founder of RDT Herbs and uh, my favorite traditional Chinese tonic herbs provider. Romania, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martin. Thanks for having me back. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. Yeah, I, I thought that it would be really interesting for our listeners to understand your perspective of the ancient heritage. How is this concept even put together? I, I would like to go back to the roots of it. I'm sure you have studied it good and hard, right? Yeah, uh, yes, I have. Uh, I've, I've very, always been very interested in Chinese culture, been there a few times, very fascinating place. And uh, they are one contiguous civilization. You know, this, we, we should find that impressive. They, they've gone back through uh, their own, you know, their own dynasties through their own civilization. For they are, the Chinese believe their wild, what they call wild history, goes back to about twenty or thirty thousand BC. And the herbs that we use, that you know, that I, uh, the formulas I've created, and that you're helping me um, uh, get out there to the world, these herbs go back to that, are thought to go back to that early uh, era of human activity. Uh, and uh, some of the early legends are where they saw what animals did. You know, the people who were living up in the northern Manchurian region, of China, kind of near Siberia, near North Korea, up in there is where it started. And people saw animals like a deer get a bone fracture. And then they would see the deer go chew on a bark of a tree. Now, in those days, if a deer got a bone fracture, it's pretty much a goner, right? Well, they watch this deer go and chew on the bark of the tree and his bone heals up right away. And they go, well, hey, and then somebody in their clan has a bone fracture or bone problem. They go get the bark and did it. And then somewhere along the line, someone figured out how to cook that as tea and drink it, which was a a really important development in humanity. And their bone healed up quicker. And someone marked that on a piece of bamboo somewhere. But the Chinese wild history believes that goes back into about 20,000 BC. So the herbs that we are uh, working with here have been, you know, empirically observed and used by umpteen billions of people over you know many many uh, eons and uh, and that that is 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 very important to me uh, because I do not like to work with a system of herbology or any healing modality that hasn't been thoroughly thoroughly documented with actual materia medicas and actual you know long empirical observation we've got all that going for us here and it's a really valuable thing for us in the West today mm-hmm. to learn about this yeah I I'm thinking. As you're saying these words, I'm thinking herbs are essentially concentrators, right? They grow in specific soil and a specific terroir in specific mm-hmm. climate. Yeah. And they concentrate into themselves the yeah. stuff that they find in the soil. Yeah. So yeah. It, it will have to mean that all the traditional knowledge that we have is extracted from the roots, from the soil. It yeah. is specific to, to that. Like to give an example, right? If I eat a carrot that's grown in Arizona, it's going to have the Arizona soil. If it's grown in somewhere yeah. in the Netherlands, it's going to be a very different carrot. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Yeah. Um, well, that is why we go to the source uh, for these herbs. And we, when we see this uh, materia, materia medica that has been developed over these thousands of years, um, the, 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 uh, the, the places of biological origin of these herbs have been documented and preserved. And so it's well known now that if we go to those actual places of biological origin to source the herbs from there, we will get the highest quality variety of that herb. Uh, because yes, um, you know, the, the, uh, the soil and the, and the atmospheric conditions and the weather are all uh, unique to any specific area. So, for instance, the rhodiola, which we have in my Awaken formula, which is a, a top adaptogen, this herb comes from Siberia, but it's also found in the, in the well, uh, eastern Himalayan mountains in Hunan province of China. And uh, this, is, this herb is adapted to live in a very, very extreme environment. And the people who took it in the old days, they discovered it because of that. They said, how do you have this rocky tundra with nothing existing? And there's this Christmas tree like plant coming out of it with flowers, you know, how, where is this thing drawing up its power, its, its nutrients? Uh, and they, they, uh, they recognized that, that if that plant could adapt in the wild, then it helped them. So the Siberian people took rhodiola, rosea, to help them survive the, the harsh winters because they had seen it in the plant's ability to survive. And that's partly how this whole thing developed. But when we look at the soil in specific regions, yes, we want to go there and 
fortunately in our lineage, the documenters of, of, of our herbs have determined, have determined thoroughly the biological places of origin. And that is where we are sourcing, you know? Right. So you, you are talking to me about the, the three, is it called? Treasures. Three treasures. Mm -hmm. Treasures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Could, could you just dive into that a bit? Explain. Okay. Yeah. Um, the three treasures is um, the there, there's a philosophy behind the herbology that we do, and this philosophy observes life. And as I just mentioned, when you talk about a plant's ability to survive in the wild, these considerations have been taken into this philosophy about life. And the Chinese and the, and the, and the Asians throughout in, in, in Kampo and Japan and, and, and in a lot of uh, Eastern and I think in Siberian uh, herbology and, and tradition, they believe that there are three primary energies of life and they are called the three treasures. And our herbs tonify or, or uh, support all three of those treasures. And so what I'm saying about the three of them, we have formulas that can go and, and support all of these. So when our, your, your viewers are listening to this and some of this resonates with them personally, we have formulas that can go to that treasure and tonify and build it up. So the first treasure is called Jing. And this means your body's physical mass and its capacity to reproduce. So it's an epigenetic energy. And it is like we're looking at the health of our children here. We're going, and really our great grandchildren. How healthy are they going to be? Are they going to be able to adapt to this coming world that is changing now? And we, we're now seeing the changes. And uh, we need to build our children to have, be more adaptable. And uh, this is called Jing. Jing is the measure of the survival of an organism. It's, it's uh, strength as a, is resilience as an organism and its ability to adapt to stress, its ability to age gracefully. And the ancient Chinese masters who developed this stuff, they wanted to be climbing the mountains when they were 100 years old. So they searched for herbs that tonified this Jing energy so they could always be up there. Now there are legends of these immortals who live in the mountains who take the herbs that tonify Jing. And there's legends of these old men and women who are carrying their bag full of herbs up through the mountains and they're ancient. And you see pictures like that uh, in old scroll paintings. That's Jing and their herbs. So over the thousands of years, these masters sought herbs to tonify gene for our longevity, our youth, vitality, and our sexual potency. And so the, there's, there's two types of gene herbs. There's yin gene herbs, which is the restoring. You know, if, you've, if you just feel burnt out, you just feel like you've overdone it, you're wiped out, you've been working too hard, you're under stress. Yin gene herbs will replenish you. Then there's yang gene herbs, which is yang means the outpouring of energy. So yang gene herbs would be taken by athletes and stuff. So my endurance formula. Uh, is for is for uh, athletic people, and uh, they in fact ha it has uh, that formula has that herb I mentioned that the deer ate. It's called a eucomia. Eucomia bark. That's the herb that the the deer ate in the in the story I told earlier that healed its bone. So you find this in it's an excellent herb in athletes' formulas. Uh, fantastic for anyone who wants to strengthen their structural framework, including the teeth. You know, that's part of our structural framework. Uh, and so these are uh, gene herbs. They're they're considered the anti aging herbs. So there you have. Shizandra, Goji, Hosho Wu, Rimania, Astragalus, you know, many of the, the top famous herbs of all time right. are there. And they're starting to get well known by uh, us in the West now and well respected herbs. Uh, and those are the Jing herbs. So you find those in, in my various formulas. Uh, yeah, eternal Jing is, is a pure Jing tonic, both yin and yang Jings put together, herbs put together to fortify and restore the fantastic formula. Uh, as I said, endurance is a great yang jing formula for athletes. Yeah. Uh, Allure is a beautiful yin jing formula. It's a beauty formula, but it's an anti-aging tonic. Mm -hmm. so I'm, those, thinking, I'm thinking here, I'm seeing a decline in jing in our generation, right? And the, Yes, you are right. This, is, this right. is a big deal. So I'm thinking those of you who are watching this if you're planning to have children maybe you should do a couple of years of endurance for the boys right 
Well, yeah, we, you're right. You're right, Martin. Um, I see it everywhere. Uh, I'm not only seeing it in people, I'm seeing it in plants and other things. It's just a lot of the damage from all the environment, the carcinogens that are out there. And the carcinogens in our food and the hidden elements like uh, preservatives and things that we don't really think about that they're not really shouldn't be there. Uh, when a preservative is there, it means the plant was um, vulnerable to, you know, and it was maybe picked on ripe and all these things. So all these factors now are leading our society to be, to be gene deficient. Uh, and uh, the, the great masters of old would come and look at our society and go, wow, you know, I see it in a lot of young people. It's very, uh, they're less adaptable to stress, less adaptable to, less able to multitask their minds, not, not as quick, not as agile, not as curious, not as creative. That's all learning. And we can give that back. You know, we can actually, you can have, uh, my formulas taste great. You can have a child drink a little of this. I would say from, you know, up to seven years old and on to be safe. Uh, it could be very helpful for them in their growth. Uh, it just is an overall a tonifier of their vitality at its root, which we believe is in the kidneys. Mm -hmm. Gene is held in the kidneys. I didn't hear you clearly enough. The one that women should use for the... Um, Allure, that's a yin gene formula. So that's an anti-aging formula. It's also a beauty formula. So we market it as a, a beauty formula. Right on. Um, uh, another great yin gene formula of mine is uh, em, uh, em, Empath. This is a, called a yin replenisher. So it's a, uh, and we could talk about that for a while because as the world warms up now, we will need more ability to be, uh, mo keep moisture in our body, be replenished. So we, uh, yin moisturizing, yin means water. So uh, water herbs, not to cause bloating, but more at a cellular level to prevent dehydration, keep our body, uh, all of our body fluid strong. So empath is a formula that I, mar I market to uh, healers because uh, healers can get drained of that yin energy from because of giving out. But this is also a very critically important formula for our time now as the world is, planet is warming to make sure that we don't get dehydrated, to, to uh, make sure that we, we maintain body's ability to assimilate fluids and maintain them. So empath is a really wonderful formula and that's a yin gene formula, yeah. Okay, great. So now the second treasure is called chi. And uh, so now we've talked about the body itself, its physical mass and its capacity to reproduce itself through an, to another. Uh, now, chi is the second treasure. Chi, we've heard that word, right? Chi is, is just simply energy. So chi is the animation of our lives. You know, we've got this body, but what are we doing with it? We're, we're, we're sitting up, we're speaking, we're talking, we're breathing. We're, we're, we're uh, digesting food, you know. Chi is sunlight. That is what we call the original chi. That's the original energy that drives the life of all living organisms. And you know, one thing I'm on, a, on a note, one thing I love about the philosophy of the three treasures is it's not homocentric to humans. It, it applies to all life. And when you understand the concept of the three treasure and how it works in nature, you see plants that have gene, you know, or not. Uh, and so chi is the driving force of evolution. That is the, the, the process of our lives from birth to death yeah. and rebirth. And so chi is important because look again at what's happening in our society. How much chi is in the food we're eating? How much sunlight is in our diet? Yep. How much sunlight are people getting as chi? We call this nutritive chi. We're gathering nutritive chi, right? right. Well, how much chi is in a ripe, you know, tomato picked off the vine, heirloom tomato, a lot. That's a bundle of sunlight. Yes. Uh, and that's what the chi that drew all those nutrients up from their soil, the, the upright chi, we call it. The yes. levitative factor. Well, then how much chi is in a box of, uh, you know, pancake mix, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so we are look at what, how much sunlight are you gathering to, to fuel the vitality of your life? Yeah, and I again, we see, we see people and young and old in America in particular, who are, are, are just dragging along. They just, they're not getting, you know, enough chi to really feel that vibrance. You know, they're walking slow, they're talking slow and thinking slow. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so yeah, there I was, I was thinking of this as, as you're talking about Ying, mm -hmm. it's the, uh, no, you meant Jing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Jing. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between the two words, Jin and Ying. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. quite. Darn Chinese anyway. 
Anyway, as you're talking about Jing, I'm thinking, well, this this is sort of a how well the automobile is built. Yeah. And when we're talking about qi, that's sort of like, well, what's in the gas tank? Yes, right? exactly. Yeah, the, the octane of that gas really affects the function of the motor in the short and the long term. Yeah, the bad exactly. gas runs it down. Your car, your car burns out. <laughs> it's exactly the, the, and, the, and the yeah. other thing that I was contemplating was sunshine. The photons that arrive here on this planet, the plant actually takes it in, slows yeah. it down, and turns it into something. Chlorophyll. It actually is stored sunlight, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh-huh. So yeah. It's actually wow. light that's being yeah. stored inside the, the substance of the plant. Yes. And all living beings are little storehouses of sunlight. But the origin of that sunlight that when we gather it is through plants. And when we eat animals, animals ate the plants. They yes. ate the plants too. Yes. And if an animal ate another animal, that animal ate the plants. And that original chi comes up for our, to our energy. Uh, and the plant is uh, taking in the sun and transmuting it into chlorophyll for our city. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now, uh, chi, uh, it, there are, we have formulas that tonify chi. When, when chi is, uh, you know, deficient in the body, uh, a number of things happen. Like I said, sluggish energy. But with women, you can see a tendency to hold water as edema. And so women can tend to get bloated in the middle and have this pesky weight gain. And they're going, why? And actually, the raw, high raw food diet does not necessarily uh, fix that. And I actually wrote a book about this called Raw Chi. It's about uh, how to, to transmute chi into true energy. And uh, so people who have a high raw diet, uh, particularly women, want to take these tonics along with it. Uh, my main chi tonic is called Essentia. And that's my formula that I marketed to women during reproductive years because women are the ones who, who need to warm the spleen, warm the middle jowl. They can, women have what we, in general, what we have, what we call a yin constitution. And again, yin means water. So women can have a tendency to hold water in their bodies as bloating and edema. What happens when that occurs is that the, the water kind of dampens the splenic organs the, uh, the, uh, the, that govern digestive metabolism and can slow down the metabolism. And a woman can feel sluggish on energy, uh, a lot of things affecting the menstrual cycle, the stool, the firmness of the stool, all of these are affected by this. So that formula of mine, Essentia, is an excellent formula for pretty much all women uh, just to help assist chi in its use in the body to build blood because young women menstruate. So they have to rebuild blood. Blood is chi. And uh, men who are vegan and vegetarian do very well with this uh, formula. Uh, men can get chi stagnation, too, in the form of bloating that goes out like this in the belly. Uh, and, uh, and so that can also help them with that. Um, would, would the Essentia work for that too? Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. Essentia is a formula that, that tonifies the blood and chi and the, and, uh, and in our lineage, we believe that blood is the carrier of chi. Chi is the mother of the blood and blood is the carrier that carries the chi to all the organs and the cells. We want that, what we call upright chi flowing, warm hands and feet, light, easy menstrual cycle for women, uh, uh, you know, good metabolism, good shape, good you know, fo- mental focus, clear skin. Uh, chi stagnation for women, for women uh, and for young men can be uh, acne breaking out. So uh, this formula essentially is a, a wonderful tonic for women to take along with a healthy food diet or any diet, but we always recommend healthy food, right? And uh, another, uh, uh, that's my primary chi formula. The other one is also targeted to women, but it's a kind of a combination of chi and, and, and a bit yang jing. It's called Phoenix. And that's for women who are getting uh, toward premenopause and beyond just to support the hormones, upright chi, the bones and energy, spirit. Yep. So that's the second treasure. That's chi. Now, the third treasure is the outcome. Um, when jing and chi are tonified, We are abundant in the third treasure called Shin. Shin literally means spirit. The thing that I love about our lineage, which is essentially a Taoist lineage, it predates Taoism by 2,700 years, but uh, it is essentially Taoist in its thought, is that a third of the emphasis, 33% of the emphasis that we place on health is on where are you at spiritually? Are you at peace? Are you... In a, in a loving state of mind, you know, in a giving state of mind, are you in a, in a state of abundance? That's all called shin. So the great masters, they found herbs that tonify shin. 
And I wouldn't be interested in this uh, herbal lineage otherwise. I'd like to have people, help people have a healthy body and strong muscles and good sexual drive and all that stuff. But if it isn't about, you know, attaining this the peaceful warrior, then I wouldn't really be interested. So the shin herbs are really my favorite and they are the outcome. Well, they're all, they're all fascinating. All the tonic herbs are super fascinating, but um, the great shin herb is reishi mushroom. Uh, and it is known as a, to a, kind of as a bridge between earth and heaven. There are ancient scroll paintings that show earth down here and there's Lao Tzu and Confucius and they've got their students, you know, and, and there's Kuan Yin with her students. And, and then there's this rock escarpment and there's a reishi in the middle and there's a heaven and there's the emperor flying around up there on a dragon, right? <laughs> uh, and they used to have to always uh, appease the emperor by putting, putting him and the empress in the art, you know, <laughs> to get good favor. Uh, but uh, so the reishi is said to be a bridge with, between the earthly realms and, and, the, and the celestial immortals of heaven. Uh, and so there's that reishi on the, the rock right there in the middle of the scroll painting. Uh, reishi is also called, a, or, uh, it, it, it's said to initiate benevolent cycles of health. When you take it, just a benevolent starts to show up. And it does. I, that's what happened to me when I first discovered reishi in 1998 when I met my teacher. And I, I started to take a, a lot of his reishi. And uh, it was about the seventh day, or maybe sixth or seventh day, I woke up. And I had, I had had a transformation. Prior to that, I thought I was like possessed. I thought I was just a completely messed up guy and was struggling to get these angry thoughts out of my mind and get positive about life. And Reishi was like, oh my God, it's, everything's changed, light and everything. And from there, my life became much more benevolent. And so Reishi can do this as universal. You know, I actually believe if we can get Reishi to everybody, we might be able to do a great thing for humanity but uh, mm -hmm. it also has a way of reconnecting us back into the everything and the all. And the humans, yeah. uh, we need to do that. We need to reconnect with nature, with our world, and with each other. Uh, yeah. Another great shin herb is asparagus root. Uh, this is the herb the Taoist monks say can make them fly when they take it. Now, I always say, please don't take some asparagus root and go try and fly. <laughs> We're not ready for that. Those masters are like, they've done a lot of work to get to that point. But uh, 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 um, asparaporia, uh, Albizia flower, these are great herbs that are classified to tonify the spirit. So these are all found in my formula shift. Uh, I take that formula myself. I, I just love it. It, it's, it has an immediate effect. I don't think it's just psychosomatic. I mean, I just, after a few hours after taking it, I feel like everything's just fine, you know? And uh, talking about taking stress off of your adrenals, so many people have spiritual stress about, you know, their, their, the, the loneliness or unhappiness of their lives on their heart. And this formula is fantastic for that. Yeah. It really helps you see a bigger picture. Yeah. I'm, I'm contemplating what you're saying, and I'm, I'm just reminded of the rise in tribalism, in, yeah. especially in this nation lately. All yeah. of a sudden, I think as Americans are starting to lose their standard of living, as yeah. the economy mm -hmm. is being sucked out by the people mm -hmm. who are controlling it, they have been sucking out the wealth mm -hmm. out of it and i don't know where they're transferring it to whether externally yeah. or into their own pockets but yeah. i'm noticing more and more people are feeling threatened yeah. and i think their their fear perhaps is being expressed yeah. in a very tribalistic way as in us versus them yeah. as opposed to as opposed yeah. to we all are on this planet this is exactly one big you know, I'm actually I'm glad you brought this up. And it's one of those subjects that maybe we probably sometimes don't want to breach, but I'm glad you brought this up in this context because the tonic herbs, it, they on a cosmic level, I mean, I believe sort of in cosmic timelines of evolution. I believe they could be showing up for us at this time as agents to help us fortify and maintain our peace, maintain our equilibrium, maintain our adaptability through these, these times of change. Uh, so that we maintain our connection to the higher and to our own bodies uh, and step up another level in the integrity of our, of, of the way we're, uh, you know, fortifying our bodies for the future and for future humanity. Um, so I think that the tonic herbs are showing up for us for at a, at a time in evolution when uh, an old way um, is being challenged and it was inevitable, you know, that we would, we would grow, we would grow out of just blind consumerism blind consumption of the, of the world's resources and start thinking more in terms of like, well, 
a lot of it like giving back now, you know, let's start giving it all back. Let's start reforesting everything, food forests, all that. Well, when we take the tonic herbs along with a healthy diet, I believe these concepts really come in because we feel safer, we feel empowered, and we feel like I can do that. Yeah, I want to do something good. You know, I want to, I want to help. I want to be part of the, you know, I, I because when people are unhealthy, they sit and worry and they get mad. Right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, and that's a vacuum. Like I would like to put forward that if you're feeling fearful, if you're feeling threatened, if you're feeling like you would like to, uh, I don't know, annihilate part of humanity because they are just not to your liking. Yeah. The, the, cup of shift my do you <laughs> thank you ma'am <laughs> yeah absolutely i think so you know speaking um, of which you know these these herbs just as a reminder you need some somewhere between a half teaspoon and a little bit more in some hot water yeah. i i found that uh i've, I've been using coconut milk with them but any any of the nut milks is probably yeah good. yeah the mother the mother earth is providing for us what we need and we can make it taste good you know yeah. uh, and uh, yeah putting in some uh, coconut milk I usually use oat milk uh, but a nice hot drink of this or cold on ice with some nut milk I I do maple syrup um, the formulas taste great you know the people are always uh, a little pleasantly surprised about that <laughs> yeah I've actually tossed it into a smoothie just you know I'm I'm using the Exula superfoods yeah. And I'm just, I just spike it with a spoonful of the, um, uh -huh. you know, sure. the herbs, whatever yeah. I feel like. That's I, right. I, yeah. I now have five different ones here, but you I do. did not bring a bottle of shift. <laughs> and, and I'll, I'll send you a special, you know, bottle of it for you. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. Just, I mean, I, I seldom now suffer from feeling fearful. Like I'm, I'm fairly. Mm -hmm safe in knowing that I'm ready to meet my maker whenever I'm called. I'm there too. <laughs> but yeah. still, still, I'm, um, I think it sounds good that, that I could be better grounded and better prepared to, to deal with yeah. it. Right? Yeah. All of us can at this time. There are, there are, there are, there are elements that want us to be scared. There, there are, there are, uh, you know, there are people who feed off our fear in the, in the media in particular. And uh, if when we take the tonic herbs, particularly like uh, if you if you take for instance uh, endurance and shift together, uh, I think you could look at all that from a perspective like, sure, okay, you got your thing, man. You know, don't, I'm not going to worry about it. You know, <laughs> you know, you can spout off all you want. It's okay. Uh, and yes, there are things to be concerned about. You know, it's not about not about turning a blind eye to it all. It's more about uh, seeing it in a constructive. Uh, wait, that doesn't wipe out our adrenals with fear. That's the key. We cannot let it get to our adrenals because that, that runs us down. When our adrenals get drained from fear, our life force, our creativity, our sexual potency, and the vibrant vibrance of our life is diminished. And so it, it's key to our own uh, you know, self-sustenance to take the tonic herbs and diet that builds up our adrenals so that we can adapt to those stresses, spiritual, emotional, societal, to be able to say, you're cool, man. You know, you're all right. You know, see you around, you know, <laughs> rather than, <laughs> you know. Uh, so is shift the only one that addresses this? Uh, this no, any of my formulas are, are uh, have a lot of shin in them. Uh, Three Masters is a shin tonic for sure. It's primarily reishi mushroom with, with shilajit, real pure, uh, amazing pure shilajit powder from the Altai Mountains of Russia. Absolutely wonderful stuff. You know, pitch black. Uh, I know because I wrote a book on shilajit, so I know how to find the right stuff. And maybe sometime we ought to have a brief discussion just on shilajit for your viewers. Well, this is a good time to put in three sentences about it. Well, three sentences is that shilajit is the humic remains of ancient rainforests. So basically it's an entire ecosystem broken down into uh, these very, very small molecules, the smallest molecules in nature are called humic acids. So they become ensconced in the, in the soil. And they're such small molecules that other plants can take them up as food. So plants eat humic acids for food. This is a pure humic acid formula. So it's like chi, you know, completely like pounded into gene, you know, in, in, in each of those humic acid molecules. When we take this, it's thought that every single element is in shilajit. 
It's the top Rasayan in Ayurvedic medicine. And Rasayan means the top tonic or superfood. Uh, and uh, in, in India, uh, the, the Sufis used it and they were, they could like run through brick walls and stuff. And they, so they call it the conqueror of mountains, destroyer of weakness. Um, so I, I wrote a book on Shilji so that I could find out how to find the perfect stuff. Mm. And this uh, that I found is pu really pure and really beautiful. Can you, relate, which, can you relate Shilajit to the uh, humic and fulvic acids that are also found all, all around the world, like in America too? Yes. Yes. Okay. It, that's an interesting uh, question because um, humic acids can exist in, you know, in concentrations in places like peat, peat bogs. And uh, there's a big open pit mine somewhere in uh, um, uh, Montana where, you know, they were searching for copper or gold and they found this massive, uh, uh, you know, layer of, of uh, humic acids from an old uh, rainforest and swamp that had been there long ago. Uh, but these are not complete. These can be used in agriculture. Uh, and uh, some people sell them as, uh, you know, soil organisms and all that stuff. But uh, Shilajit is unique in that it is only found in high mountain ranges above about 10,000 feet. And what happens in the spring is that the rock strata expand a bit in the warmer sun and causes cracks and fissures. And out of those fissures, this black tarry stuff comes out. And the, the monkeys and animals, and the, the, the uh, mountain goats would go up there to eat it, still do. Uh, and then eventually people found this and ate it and they called it shilaji. But um, it, it's unique to the high mountains what happened then, it means it's the humic remains of ancient, ancient, ancient primeval rainforests from way back when the Indian subcontinent and the Asian subcontinent collided and those mountains were pushed up. There had been a, a rainforest there and they were like that. Those rainforests was mulched in like in a veggie wrap <laughs> into the mountains and up. And now in the high mountains, this pure uh, humic remains that have been there for maybe millions of years uh, seep out. So it's a more concentrated and pure. It's very rare on earth. There isn't much. And when we're on that subject, I would, I would love to say to people, uh, there are um, Shilaji products out there like resins. And if you're going to get this stuff, use a, like, a little bit like on the end of your pinky is all you need for a day and revere it because there's not much of it in the world. So don't you think you, get, you need to bogart it to get more, to make you more powerful. Your body can't even probably absorb that much. It's so potent. Uh, stretch it, make it last because there isn't much and be thankful for what you have. <laughs> but yeah, my shilajit is a beautiful, a pure uh, black um, Altai shilajit. Um, and it is mixed 50% with reishi. So reishi being this, and, and reishi is also one of the top immune uh, modifying, modulating herbs. So these two together, I mean, I had that epiphany in about 2008. I said, oh my God, if you put shilajit and reishi together. And then right then I happened to hear about Ormus at the same time. And uh, Ormus is another probably discussion, although I, I, I humbly admit that I'm, I'm not an aficionado on Ormus. Ormus, all I know is that it is thought to be somewhat, it, 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 it exists at the threshold between energy and matter. And I call it a dedication device. So it's found within the lattices of, of uh, silica structures, of uh, you know, silicate structures that, uh, that form uh, crystals. And uh, it is found there, and it is something like the dedication device that forms the crystalline lattices that starts to create what we see as life. Yeah. It's found there. And uh, so these ancient uh, urns were found in, in Chinese and Egyptian tombs from the same era, about 3500 BC. Hmm. And they found urns where they had been taking gold and, synthesis and smelting it into a white dust, and the emperors and the pharaohs were taking it. Yep. And that, hmm. that was enormous. Uh, then when the library at Alexandria burned, uh, that whatever that information of that alchemy was lost. And uh, I think that information is all in the Vatican basement now. But, um, uh, well, you know, interestingly, I have been in on the Armas story since 1996 when uh, yeah. David yeah. Hudson came out with his lectures. Yeah. And then I met a fellow who had a full living recollection of having worked with King David Mm -hmm. as his master mm -hmm. alchemist and they yes. were talking about how they were actually using the urine of nuns female urine yeah. uh -huh. to collect that so that they would have the urea because they needed to uh, get that to uh, create the high ph 
menstruum to uh, to extract this. And when the when the conversation was about streets paved with gold, yeah, they were paved with the crystalline gold, with the Armus version. Okay, wow. Not yeah. the yellow metal, but the glassy, yes. glassy crystal. Wow. And what's what's interesting? Probably the, I would. I immediately thought of the crown, the original crown on the pyramid. Yeah, and what was interesting is, of course, they were they taught us because this fellow completely recalled it and taught us what's now known as the wet method concentration, where yes, you, take, yes. you can take Dead Sea yes. salt because yes. it's the essence of the Dead Sea. And mm -hmm. anyway, and with, uh, with uh, sodium hydroxide, we can use sodium hydroxide to raise the pH. And with the pH, we precipitate this snow out of this dissolved salt and this snow. That's exactly how it crystals. So anyway, back in, back in 96 to about 2001 or two, mm -hmm. I made a lot of it. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I extracted it by the buckets and I, I used, normally they tell you take a teaspoon. Yeah. I was taking 12 teaspoons. <laughs> and, and what's interesting, it, it changes you, right? It's like you're yeah. talking about personality change. Yeah. When you are on high almost dose, you are, well, I'll say it this way. Armus, for me, is the connection between the spiritual, non-material, mm -hmm. and physical. Yes. yes. With the Armus present in the body, you're able to express in yeah. the physical world that yeah. which is really. achieved in the world of the spirit or the soul. I so agree. Soul, it, is, it is a bridge. Yeah. 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 Bridge. Good word. I call it a dedication device uh, yeah. between energy and matter. Yeah. Tran transmitter to me, but. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so when I was doing that, these high doses, it was giving me all kinds of cities, powers that are usually reserved only for people who do a lifetime of meditation. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I was, yeah. I was hearing people's thoughts. I was well aware like i knew that the phone was going to ring and i knew who was going to be on it and yeah. or you know persons telling me their address and i could be telling them their address because i already heard the thought before the lips would move right yes yeah but it had a side effect it was essentially pushing me off off wanting to just give up the physical world just yeah. quit i just wanted to pick up my walking stick and a bowl and head for the Himalayas. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Which, at that point, I had a wife, two teenage daughters, and a business. <laughs> and I thought, you, you <laughs> didn't pick that life. You became a householder. You're going to have to carry this ball yeah. across the line, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I cut back on the... You just cut back some. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do our precipitation uh, method is the same as what you did. And um, uh, my provider uses these salts that he, he gets mined from about 10 miles under Bolivia somewhere. Uh, but, and then goes through that precipitation process you mentioned. Yeah. But um, he, he, uh, uh, he, he tells me that it's so potent that you don't need much of it in there. It's, it's almost on a homeopathic sort of uh, elements, you know. Yeah, once you concentrate it, you just need a few grains, just the same way as you spoke yeah. of shilajit. It's the yeah. sort of quantity that, that's enough. Yeah. It's enough. Yeah. I was just uh, really thrilled when I thought of the idea of putting reishi, shilajit, and hormones together in 2007. Um, it, was a, it was just a, it was an epiphany. <laughs> and to me, that's still today, I guess it's, I have a, all my formulas are my faves. You know, they're all my babies. And I've got more coming, by the way. But uh, that one just keeps standing out. Is a, if you want it, one thing to give to everybody on Earth, you know, that's probably it. <laughs> the, the three masters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The only thing about it is it, it tastes bitter. It's the one of my formulas yeah. that tastes bitter. Yeah. Uh, when you use it properly, uh, it can you can taste kind of like coffee, you know. And you maybe put like a, a quarter teaspoon in a cup of water. It tastes kind of like a nice mild coffee. So, you know, younger people would like it that way. But people who have finicky taste, uh, that's the one that they, they might have a little more trouble with. Exactly my experience. I That's the one I picked and I mixed it. And I thought, hmm, this is going to take a little bit of honey to uh, manage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. 
we used to serve it at Raw Evolution in Los Angeles and they served it straight. And I was like, really straight? And then I had a cup and they were diluting it just right. Where probably, like I said, using about a third of a teaspoon in the hot water. And, and I came to like, what? This is, this is perfect. You can really develop a taste for it the same way you do with coffee. First time I ever had coffee, I thought it was awful, you know? And, yeah, and okay, so make it weaker. Don't, don't go for a full half spoon, go only third spoon. Uh, well, if you're, if you're a connoisseur and you like it and you, you're, you're up for it, a half a teaspoon is uh, yeah, excellent. Uh, but uh, if you want to work your way up. It's intense. Well, it's intense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you get used to it, but it's intense to start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So those are the three treasures, the three primary energies of life and the herbs that, you know, that, that tonify them. It, it's a fascinating philosophy of how life lives and, and functions and ev evolution works. And uh, those masters over those years found herbs that, that directly, you know, uh, what we call tonify. Uh, the word tonify means to tune the strings of an instrument into harmony. It's an old Greek word. I love that word uh, because we're, we're attempting to tune the strings of our instrument to be in harmony between the body and, the, and its energy and the spirit. And, and that is the ultimate goal and the ultimate, um, you know, uh, capacity of the tonic herbs for anyone to achieve that with a little bit of in research and in interest in it to achieve a sense of balance of my body, mind, and spirit. And you can't rush it, you know, you got to give it time, but it's actually that, that process is miraculously wonderful because as soon as you start feeling that energy emerging, you already know it. And each day you feel like you're getting a little closer or closer to your wholeness. And that's a beautiful trek beyond. What a beautiful note I would like to end on. Yeah. So there are these three sides to it. Mm -hmm. It's it's a wheel. Yes. And there are spokes in it, and you cannot really mm, right, right. do without one or the other. And you need to that, be strong spokes. All the spokes need to be strong. Yeah. yeah. It, it's it's like that automobile that we mentioned earlier. Yeah. Pick yeah. the pick the wheel that's the most important. Mm -hmm. They're all important. If you're yeah. missing a wheel, you're not going anywhere. Yeah, you can't get in the carburetor and drive off. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. So I'm looking forward to our next encounter, whenever that may be. But for yeah. now, thank you, Romania. This is hey, thank you, thank you, and Such enlightening and educational. And yeah. Absolutely. I appreciate I appreciate your, your interest in my work and getting helping get it out there to the world and you yourself your work you know you, we're we're like minds when we know we uh, you know a lot of what I'm talking about already that's why I like talking with you yes thank you yeah, yeah the call faking time. it you know you need to put in your ten thousand hours because if you don't yeah. you're just yeah you just yeah. haven't yet okay. mm -hmm. anyway thank you this is Martin Petella for life enthusiast www.life-enthusiast.com find us online or give us a call thank you very much